Hill, light welterweight champion, the former undisputed lightweight champion, Tia Fimo Lopez, fighting June 29th, defending the lineal title against Steve Claggett, June 29th on ESPN, back home in Florida. He, home is Florida and, and Brooklyn, New York, so they're both his homes. But, Tio, what's going on, brother? Oh, man, yo, it's been going good, honestly. Training camp has been phenomenal. Um, a lot of good work lately, you know, getting good sparring in as well. And just learning from from just previous um, trials and tribulations, really, you know, just getting better and growth. So I'm excited, man. June 29th against Steve Claggett. It's a rough, rugged fighter. And I look forward to giving everybody a show on ESPN. Yeah, man, Steve Claggett, you got, you know, some fans saying he's he's uh, overmatched compared to the, the fighter you are heading into this. But, you know, he's a kid who came out to Vegas 14, 15 years ago, trained with Yoel Judah train try to get some work at the Mayweather gym this this is a kid who's been a pro for over 15 years and now he's getting his dream fight his first shot at the title what are your thoughts on Steve Claggett um my thoughts on Steve Claggett is like a Rocky Balboa movie I've been saying like this guy is like I'm the Apollo Creed and he's Rocky so that's my thoughts on it so I definitely have high expectations with him you know, I don't overlook him, and I think that he's definitely going to bring the best out of me this fight. So that's the best thing about it all is that, um, you know, I pick these type of fighters for those specific reasons. I want to see what more can I do. You know, um, even at the moment right now, a lot of these other champions in my weight class, although I'm lenient and number one in the division, we, we want to unify these guys. You know, we want to make these bigger fights happen. However, they have their agenda. They have their plans with their fighters, and – all I could do right now is just stay active, you know, and that's the main important part about everything that I need right now. It's just the activity part. Is his, um, well, actually, though, Apollo, he had quite a tough time with Rocky. Do you really envision a fight that difficult? Well, that's the reason, you know, I think that uh, when you when you see stuff like that from movies and stuff, you, you don't want to reenact that, you know. So, of course, if I'm not well prepared and stuff, this is definitely a tough fight. You know, and and this definitely will look bad on my record if had had things gone his way, you know. But I don't believe that. I believe that with all well, good preparation and staying focused and having that underdog, but at the same time champion mentality, I believe that I'm going to win with flying colors. You know, um, I'm getting better. You know, I'm working on my craft every day, as you would know. You know, you know how hard I am on myself when it comes to these things. So I'm looking forward to a great matchup. And that's what we do. You know, I have the best we have the best matchmakers in the world. And that's Bruce Trampler and Brad Goodman. So I know that they know what they see and they know what it's going to be come um, June 29th. He's a, uh, a high guard pressure fighter. Is his style tailor made for you to, to look impressive and, and do the things you do best? Yeah, it's tailor made. Don't get me wrong. You know, Steve Clegg is a high high um guarded and high come forward pressured fighter like you said so yeah steve claggis definitely has that in me however the guy doesn't stop throwing punches however the guy doesn't stop coming forward and the guy doesn't take breaks you know so this is definitely a different look for me and i know that and i know that with well preparation and and constant conditioning you know i should i should do exactly what i know what i'm gonna do on the 29th you know, so many people have it where this guy, I should walk all over him. But these guys are not easy. They're not easy fighters at all, you know. And But like I, I mentioned to Roy Jones Jr. at the Box Fan Expo um, earlier this year, I told him, I said, you remember what you used to say? He, and he said this when he was in his time in, in fighting. He used to say this. He says that who I fight is not easy. I just make it look easy. You know, and, and that's where I'm at now in that pedigree. So, you know, we started laughing about that. But in reality, it's not easy. They're very tough, tough, difficult fighters. You know, while we're talking about Claggett's style um, and just styles in general, uh, you got the win over guys like Jermaine Ortiz and Sandor Martin. Um, but what do you think about the analysis from fans and, and even guys like me that it's like, um, it seems like the movers that there's all this talk about this Tio cut off the ring good enough and the 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 style that uh, against movers and what yeah. what, do you think, what do you make of all that Tio? Well, it's just you know it's okay. I mean, like with Santa Martin, I felt like you know the guy didn't really want to um, compete with me in that level. Same thing with Ortiz. Ortiz showed more that he didn't really want to engage with me. 
However, I understand the other part where people are like, well, I should learn how to work around that. You know, so these are just things that I'm going through. I'm not fight, I'm not fighting or facing guys that are that are chumps. You know, at the same time, these guys are well experienced and they're very difficult style fighters. You know, but we go and aim for those type of fights for the reasons of of learning and actually getting better. You know, as at the same time, you know, I'm still developing within myself, despite everything that I've accomplished already. You know, but every time a fighter does come to me in that in that sense or in that aggression of trying to show something, what happens? You know, the, the fight changes. So, you know, everyone can say about cutting off the ring and all these things. But until you're there in there with me, you know, it's a different story. You know, you got to be in my shoes. and But it's all a learned experience. That's what it is. It's not, it's not like I, I've lost those fights. I've won every fight. It's more so about, okay, what did I do right? What did I do and do wrong? And like, and just work from there in the ring, in the gym. That's, that's life. You know, people just going to be hard on me because of where I'm at. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm talking for where, from where it's so much easier from where you're standing on fight night, so much easier. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I know that T.O. but mm -hmm. watching from where I'm watching, part of me thinks that, that one, like wonderful athleticism you got in the counter punching when guys like Floyd, guys that like Floyd that love to keep the lead hand low like you do when it came time to cut distance against guys that didn't want to stay in front of him or exchange he picked the hand up even against Zab Judah or Conor McGregor he would say you know what I'm gonna just go high guard and do is that something like you've thought of when it comes to cutting off the ring or you know making that adjustment well, from fighting the athletic back foot style counter punching style to cutting distance and you just your thoughts on that no, yeah, absolutely. I think that there's always room to grow. You know what I'm saying? There's room to change things. That's why I ask uh, fellas like, you know, I ask uh, Roy Jones, I ask Antonio Tova, I ask champions in that in that pedigree. You know, Tova said that it was hard to it's hard to engage with a fighter that doesn't stay still. It's hard to counter a fighter that doesn't want to compete and fight with you. That's from someone that's uh, a, a champion you know and and from the times that of that era that was really really like the best fighting the best constantly you know i asked him i said yo what should i do differently i asked roy jones how should i do that differently because i'm someone that knows that i'm a student of the game this is what comes with it it's at the same time as god is building me up to be who i need to be in the sport of boxing i am able to ask my peers and people that i've actually worked with or let's just say that i've learned with and, and ask them in person now, which is the best blessing, and be like, how did you do it with this? And I remember Roy just telling me, all you got to do is just take out your hand and just guide them to, like, wherever they're going, just kind of, like, make them, like, realize that, nah, you can't come this way. So this is just different things, you know, and that's part of growth, really, you know. Am I, I'm my hardest critic on it, but I know for a fact my biggest issue with the Jermaine Ortiz fight is that I only did two sparring sessions that fight. So I didn't really get a lot of... um. I didn't get a lot of memorization of cutting the ring off and stuff like that. And plus, I didn't expect to fight a guy like that. I expected to fight a guy that had his last three previous fights against Lomachenko and so many other fighters to compete the way the same level. You know what I mean? I got fooled a little bit. Maybe it could have been because the guy wanted to engage with me. But then the moment I hit him, it changed the whole the whole game plan for him. So whatever the case be, you know, it's a learned experience. And all I can do from there is just improve moving forward. Um, just talking about 